Hello and welcome. You're watching News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. The Supreme Court has pulled up the government after it submitted the one rank, one pension payment roadmap in a sealed cover. Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud said that sealed covers are fundamentally against the judicial process, adding that the sealed cover procedure needs to end. Otherwise, high courts will also start following the practice. Recently, while hearing the Adani Hindenburg matter, CGI Chandrachud had refused to accept the sealed cover by the center, which proposed names for the expert committee. Joining me now to take this forward is Justice Madan B. Lokur, former judge of the Supreme Court. Justice Lokur, thank you very much for joining us. Give us a sense of how this practice of submitting reports in a sealed cover before the court affects transparency and the administration of justice. Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, you see, the uh, court system that we have in India is an open court system. It is transparent. Anybody can walk into the uh, courtroom and uh, watch the proceedings. Of course, there are certain exceptions, you know, when some proceedings are to be held in camera. For example, uh, in matrimonial disputes or uh, matters relating to sexual offenses and so on. But by and large, constitutional issues, uh, they have to be held in an open court. So really the uh, practice of a sealed cover is the antithesis of having an open court. There are exceptions to this in the sense that uh, section 123 and section 124 of the uh, Evidence Act uh, provides for the uh, state, that is the government, producing documents uh, only for the consideration of the court. Uh, these are uh, called privileged documents. Now, such documents have to be produced, they can be produced uh, in a sealed cover along with an affidavit of the head of the department concerned. So, if it's uh, from the government of India, for example, a particular ministry, then the secretary of that ministry has to give an affidavit giving the reasons why the documents are privileged and why they should not be disclosed to the public. The court will then mm. decide whether in fact the documents are privileged or not. And if they're not privileged, mm. then the court will, uh, you know, unseal the uh, documents and make it available to the public for uh, scrutiny. Um, there have mm. been instances of this right. nature. Uh, in the past where some documents have been uh, given and uh, the court has said, well, we don't think, you know, these are privileged documents. Um, you see, privileged documents are those which pertain to the affairs of state, right? Um, something like uh, foreign relations, for example. What, what is the relationship of uh, India with some other country? These are matters which are uh, affairs of state and for which, of course, the court will not, uh, you know, usually uh, reveal these documents to the public. But the present system Justice of, Lukur, uh, you know, you... putting any and every document, yeah, yes, yes, please. Yes, uh, Justice Lokur, do you, do you feel that the practice of uh, uh, sealed cover jurisprudence has been exploited over the years by the government? Yes, in the sense that, uh, you know, now uh, any and every document uh, is sought to be placed in a sealed cover and handed over to the court without mm -hmm. complying with the provisions of section 123 and 124 of the Evidence Act. So the court mm -hmm. should definitely discourage this. You know, I mean, they can take documents in a sealed cover, but then they must be accompanied by the affidavit of the secretary of the concerned ministry. That is not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, that is where the problem lies. Uh, considering Justice Lokur that this practice uh, has been happening very recently, we had seen it in the Adani Hindenburg matter, where the court came down very strongly on uh, uh, the government council, stating you cannot be giving your recommendations on how the committee should be formed. Uh, the people who should be a part of this committee, you cannot be giving this in a sealed cover. It's a, it's a matter of national importance. Everyone should know about it. Uh, but uh, how do you think the Supreme Court can really clear the air as far as the sealed covers go? Because as you have said, it's become a commonplace practice. It's happening in high courts. It's happening in Supreme Court. Well, the only thing is that the Supreme Court should insist on an affidavit in accordance with Section 123 mm. and 124 of the Evidence Act 
from the head of the department, that is the secretary of the ministry concerned. Right? So it has to be by some responsible person. It's not that, uh, you know, somebody just hands over a sealed cover to the government lawyer and the government lawyer then hands it over to the court. There must be an mm. affidavit of the concerned secretary of the ministry. That is the law. Mm. 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 Right. Uh, Justice Nokur, do you also believe that somewhere over the years the Supreme Court has also uh, made this mistake of overlooking the procedure when it comes to uh, the sealed cover jurisprudence? Uh, yes, it has. Uh, it has. Uh, you see, uh, I don't know the reason why it has overlooked this uh, procedure. But, uh, you know, by and large, uh, there, there are no, I mean, in a case, it's very, very unlikely that some document pertaining to the affairs of state uh, will be produced. Right? It's very unlikely. Mm. So, I think mm. perhaps taking advantage of this, you know, the sealed cover procedure, uh, you know, got initiated. But, uh, yes, I think, uh, you know, because it has now become routine, uh, there must be an insistence yeah. on an affidavit. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, this thing can just go on and on and on, uh, you know, without stopping. Uh, so, we've been reading about uh, sealed cover jurisdiction. And earlier, it used to pertain to administrative matters, matters relating to uh, promotions or career records of bureaucrats, government officials, uh, affairs of the state. If, if we were to ask you about the origins, originally, the kind of cases where the Supreme Court insisted on an affidavit, why this should be or a particular matter should be submitted to the court in a sealed cover. Could you give us the origin and the kind of cases that were initially handled by the Supreme Court? Well, uh, let me go back uh, to, uh, uh, you know, the uh, judgment delivered by the Supreme Court in the case of uh, S.P. Gupta, which related to the appointment of judges uh, or Mm. the uh, permanent appointment of judges or judges who were additional judges and were to be made permanent. Now, the government, mm. uh, you know, produced the files and uh, they said that we are claiming privilege. So, the Supreme Court went into the uh, arguments of uh, privilege and said that these do not pertain to affairs of state. All right. So, mm. they said that, mm. uh, you know, the lawyers can have a look at it and make their submissions on the basis of the files that you have uh, produced. There is only one mm. limitation and that limitation is that mm. the documents on which, on which uh, privilege is claimed and which mm. is declined by the Supreme Court cannot be used, mm. you know, in other proceedings. Right. Mm. So, in S.P. Gupta's case, mm. they said there's no question of any affairs of state in this. And, uh, you know, uh, whatever was there in the files was uh, made available to the uh, court and to the lawyers. There have been several such mm. cases uh, in the past, uh, you know, uh, where, say, there's a file noting somebody higher up disagrees, then somebody further higher up, you know, uh, has a different opinion. And uh, they have said, oh, you see, these are uh, matters of uh, state and they should not be disclosed. Mm. But the Supreme Court has mm. never accepted this kind of thing. Uh, I can't offhand right. say of any case where, uh, you know, privilege has been upheld. But I would say that, you know, issues mm. of foreign relations, for example, uh, cases which mm. clearly fall under 123 and 124 of the Evidence Act would be affairs of state, not, you know, just any <laughs> kind of... Uh, document that the government wants to produce. Right. Any case uh, which you recall, uh, Justice Lokur, where the administration of justice was impacted because of uh, the submission of government's views or arguments or status on a particular matter in a sealed cover? I can't uh, offhand recall any such case. You know, but uh, mm. something like investigations, for example, you know, the status of investigations mm. or a status report on investigations, these mm. uh, the Supreme Court uh, or any court for that matter, you know, will not disclose because that can impact mm. the investigations, right? So, there I suppose, uh, you know, the court is a little more uh, liberal in that sense. 
um, and uh, you know permits uh, seal cover but then that is because it is in the interest of the parties that is the prosecution as well as the accused not to disclose the status of the investigation but in constitutional matters i i don't i can't recall any uh, such instance you know where documents have been given in a sealed cover and not disclosed to anybody okay my final question sir considering that uh, there may be so many precedents of governments giving their status reports recommendations in a sealed cover to high courts and supreme court now will it be difficult for the supreme court now to insist in future cases uh, do you think uh, there'll have to be a very clear word by the supreme court from the chief justice's bench on this it's not necessary because the law is already there you know now you mm. mentioned recommendations now recommendations do not pertain to affairs of state you know except i suppose when you are uh, wanting to some post somebody as an ambassador to a different country or when india has an objection to somebody being posted as an ambassador to india of some foreign country mm. you know so i mean these kind of recommendations are i mean hardly anybody ever i don't know of anybody having challenged these kind of recommendations but recommendations of another kind uh, you know they they can't be uh, privileged documents uh, you could have right. you know the supreme court calling for a report for example the supreme court has called for a report on the pegasus uh, issue right the supreme court called for a report on uh, a fake encounter okay now that is entirely for the supreme court to decide whether because it's a, it's a report that the supreme court has called for so it is for the supreme court or the high court to decide whether it should be disclosed to the public or not but then you have you know reports that are given by the uh, you know centrally empowered committee on environmental issues they're not privileged their recommendations their reports they're not privileged they're given to everybody in advance so there are a variety of documents but uh, I, i don't think the supreme court has to lay down the law because it is already there it just has to implement right. the law all right uh, thank you very much justice lokur for joining us explaining us the sealed cover jurisprudence and why the supreme court must insist that affidavits must be submitted by officials in court explaining why the report has to be in a sealed cover and only affairs pertaining to the state and the state's relations with other countries must be given in a sealed cover on that note we're taking a short break lots more on new center when we are back